Hi everybody, here we are in the last module of the course. Uh, you'll see that there are fewer number of assignments in the last module, and that's sort of the way that it's happened. It's been a stair-stepping reduction of assignments, um, and that's for a reason. I start out the course with a lot of assignments in the first module, then number two gets less, and third and fourth gets less and less, and that's really for your benefit. I know many of you are taking more than one course, and you'll have big assignments in other courses that are due like term papers, or you'll be cramming for big math exams or something because it's such a condensed period of time. So I kind of want to back off a little bit on the amount of information you sort of have to digest. Right. But again, there's also a flip side of that. Uh, the last module, of course, is more critical thinking about what you've learned so far to help you for the final quiz. A little heads up about the final quiz. It won't be like the first three quizzes. It won't be multiple choice. There'll be essay response questions uh, in, in there. And I'm going to open it up for you to take beginning next Monday. And you'll have till next Friday. You'll have full five days to have that prepared for me. I know the course ends on Thursday of next week, but I'm going to give you an extra day to work on it. And it'll be open for you in the quiz thing. You can, you can keep working on it and typing your response and finally submit it when you're ready. So these this last module really to help you sort of prepare for that. All right. So in this assignment, really what we're going to be getting at um, is not only a search for new meaning, you know, how people are shifting and changing and moving away from traditional religions in our society right now, particularly young people, um, where the myths in which create these religions just don't interact with young people. I mean, when you think about old myths like Christianity or, or Judaism, you know, what does anybody walking around the desert with a sheep shank have anything to do with your life? And and that's really what it's about. We're learning so far that myths are where it's about, and they need to sort of resound or resonate um, with the things are which important to you. So we've seen some examples of how new myths are being inculcated, right? We saw this with the uh, interact children of the sun with Anton, how he's producing sort of an amalgam of new symbols and new myths to sort of reinvigorate a way of, of a way of thinking with, with profound social effects, which are generally very positive. Well, we should expect the same, not just in Andean cultures, for cultures all over the world and including things that are happening here right in the United States. So we'll be looking at that. And additionally, what we need to do, too, is take off from where Jung left off. So Jung was, Jung, Carl Jung was telling us, you know, how important archetypes were, right, and where they come from in the myths um, for the transformation of self in the process of individuation. And, and, of course, that transformation process was positive as a psychological thing because Jung was a psychologist. He wasn't a religious scholar, but, of course, Jung helps us understand the process of religion. Now, where Jung went it's where he didn't finish. He never taught us or told us how one becomes religious, right? What is the process of this? What does it actually take? Because after all, when we're all born, we're sort of these blank slates. And at some point, we have to receive some sort of information and practice that information that allows a transformation of consciousness. So we'll be looking at that primarily through a couple, two, two things here. The first one is a paper written by Tanya M. Lerman. And uh, she wrote, Metakinesis, How God Becomes Intimate in Contemporary U.S. Christianity. Uh, so she's looking at, you know, a sort of a emerging sort of form of Christianity is evangelical, right? Exuberant evangelical sort of Christianity, where God becomes inward sense, uh, sort of focus, where you have more contact with God itself versus some through some functionary, like a priest, like the, the, the priest tells you what God wants and keeps that interface separate, right? Well, that is beginning to collapse right now in evangelical Christianity. And a move that is more like what we see in animistic perspective, like Native Americans, right? So what is the process of becoming intimate and religious with God? And that process, is, as you can see here in the name of the paper, is called metakinesis. So pay attention to that term and see how metakinesis is established, right? And that allows us to see how the rest of the archetypes come into play to sustain and maintain religion in your life and the transformation towards individuation. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is sort of a precursor of what we're looking at right now and what Tanya Lerman was, was looking at. And this film is dates way back about 50 years ago, and it's called Holy Ghost People. Um, and these are a group of exuberant uh, Pentecostal Christians, and they are still in the United States everywhere and growing. Um, this one is centered in a small town in West Virginia, which is near and dear to me. I grew up on the border of West Virginia, on a, another state. And, um, and 
of my grandparents used to call these people holy rollers. And they don't get near the holy rollers. They're strange and terrible. They do things with snakes and they shake on the ground and they talk in tongues. And I never really could understand, you know, what was going on. You know, people thought they were, you know, cursed by the devil, this or that. No, they had gone into a different place in the subconscious, that place which was defined by Jung for the purpose of becoming religion. And being evangelical, the idea of being newborn and receiving the, the idea of the Christ thing, um, no matter where you are in your life, resounds very much with this idea of metakinesis. And you're going to see it in actual plays. You're going to go into an actual church worship and you're going to watch it for yourself, actually, physically. Right. So I want you to see that process that Tanya Lurban was beginning to describe in her paper. All right. Now, next, let's see where this kind of plays out in the transformation of society. Um, how all sorts of new symbols are coming in, uh, how people are ritualizing these symbols and coming together in places that make sense, particularly for young people who are tired of cities, tired of urban life, and they're escaping to places with power, places with beauty, right? Places that can renew and come together. So we're looking at a paper by Adrian Ivanga. It's called Nature and Self and New Age Pilgrimage. So I think this ties very much together with Intecture of the Sun and as well as the Brazilian Electronic Music Festival paper, uh, which you saw, we read about three, uh, two and a half weeks ago, right? Where people were traveling into, you know, areas of Brazil, you know, for these large electronic music festivals in these idyllic, wonderful outdoor spaces. And let's see what kind of connections we can make between those two papers and what you're reading here as a form of those two that are happening right here in the desert southwest, you know, and, and, and for the most part, all over the United States. Okay. Now, lastly, in this, there's also going to be a negative of what happens when Groups become so countercultural, right? They see so much hypocrisy in mainstream religious wor worships um, that they begin to form pocket sects of their homes. And if they degenerate and sort of go off the grid, they can form cults, which can be actually injurious to the individuals um, which are co-opted into these things. Um, because their visions go so off the rail, um, it can actually have del deleterious consequences for individuals, including you know murder and suicide, uh, which we're going to look at um, in a documentary on Heaven's Gate. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Heaven's Gate, and many of you aren't, because it did happen, it's beginning to recede into the past. Um, I want you to have a look um, at what happens when things can go wrong. Um, and what happens to your subconscious structure um, when the myths are misinterpreted by the Messiah? Um, so that we can be careful about how we guide our religions in the future. And if we can see warning signs, how we can decide, you know, what is freedom of religion and where it actually crosses the line in which there needs to actually be social, right, and legal intervention to actually protect individuals. All right. Now, lastly, I'm going to give you some heads up. The last assignment, which we're going to be doing, is one more left to go. Um, this is the one where we're going to be looking at something even more, more primal. Uh, we're seeing how people become religious, how it's maintained and sustained, the transformation in, in the subconscious, right? Now we're going to look at, at what is God and where is it at? And I, that's our last assignment. I hope you're going to look forward to that because it's going to be a very interesting sort of uh, delve into the location of God. And we'll primarily be doing that through the last film in the Power of Myth series called The Mask of Eternity. So let's make sure you still have that Amazon account active and you're able to watch that last film that's in the next assignment. And of course, in the next assignment, we'll be delving into something um, that's kind of gone off uh I think the political roadmap right now because of the COVID and all the political drama going up, and that's Islam in America. You know, it used to be such a huge issue of, of Islam is rising in America and people perceiving a problem or a threat. We have to figure out, you know, what are the realities of this? You know, is, is Islam a threat or a blessing or neither? Is it just is? Um, and what, how is it that young people that, that practice Islam you know, feel about their religion? And who are people that practice these religions? And let's try to overturn some stereotypes um, in a, our very last presentation on this course. All right. So let's get going with the work. And again, if you have any questions at all, you know, please just pick up the phone and give me a call or hit me with the emails. All right. Bye.